crisis rocks the leadership of political parties as national party officers of the PDP resign and the APC have eyes set on them. And APC member seeks dissolution of the governor, my Malapuni-led Kateka committee of the party. Well, this is Plus Politics and I am Mary Anna Cole. Seven deputy national officers made up of the deputy national publicity secretary, the deputy legal advisor, the deputy women leader, amongst others, resigned their positions, citing bad treatment. Uh, the PDP national chairman, um, they were saying that this was the treatment they got from the national chairman. Now, they also cited financial indiscipline and poor leadership as reasons for their resignation. This latest event may fuel the crisis rocking the leadership of the PDP. Well, joining us to discuss this is a former special advisor to the River State Governor, Punabo Inko Tare. And of course, we will be having join us um, the former publicity secretary of the People's Democratic Party in River State and the APC chieftain, um, Ugo Chuku Nzekwe. Uh, but thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Inko Tare. Thank you. Good evening, Marianne. I'm good evening, viewers. It's interesting to see that, um, you know, we were just recently talking about the crisis rocking the APC, but it seems like the PDP is not left out on, on this drama. I mean, the PDP has lost soldiers. They've lost um, governors. They've lost senators. Now they're losing mem strong members of their party, and they're citing bad treatment, um, you know, by the, the chairman of the party. Um, do you have any idea what exactly these people are referring to? Well, first, um, one is not really surprised. I'm not taking my back because there have been precursory signs of this to happen and many more to happen. In the past, uh, the leadership has been accused of high-handedness and uh, collusion with some governors. And more so, you will agree with me that nobody wants to be treated with these things. I mean, lukewarm acceptance is, is much more bewildering than, than outright rejection. And they have accused, they plan their resignation on uh, the disdain treatment they received from Prince Uche Secundus. Uh, that being the case, but I believe, well, my conviction is that it has to do with pecuniary reasons. When they say, they rightly said so too, but not necessarily on <clears throat> altruistic reasons. I believe that they carried out their, their act, though they resigned simply because they have not been really carried along financially. They probably must have been sidelined, and uh, they must have had a judge preceding the resignation, which did not yield anything fruitful or reasonable, uh, according to them. So they had to resign rather than being sidelined. Uh, this also tells you that the party is in crisis, just like the APC. The party is in crisis. And it's also, it has also threatened the party's ability to take over come 2023. And, and, and talking about financial recklessness, because this is a, this are some of the things that were cited in their claims. That is, that is what they are led, financial yes, recklessness. Yes, yeah. I, I, and you're saying that these people may probably have not been carried along. How do you leave a party that you, is in crisis? I mean, in, at a time like this, when political parties are supposed to band together, everybody's trying to realign um, getting ready for, you know, 2023. Uh, you, how do you leave the PDP for the APC, who's also having its own internal crisis? Um, I mean, what's the sense in that? Again, as P the PDP um, is seen depleting every single day, is there any hope for the PDP in 2023? Well, I just told you, I said the chances of the PDP ousting the APC in 2003 is quite slim. Uh, given the defection the, uh, that has taken place in recent times. Nevertheless, talking of defecting from the PDP to the APC, just as some members are defecting to the APC, some members are also defecting to the PDP. Like I said yesterday, if I have to jog your memory your brain a little, I told you, I said, most of these politicians don't have ideologies. They are all there. They are in politics for gastric reasons. They are in politics just to further or line their pockets. They are not in politics for any Nigerian 
they are not in politics to um, smoothing out the rats in the, in the society. They're in politics for their own personal gain. And so when they leave the, AP, the PDP for the APC, probably they must have reached accommodation with members of the APC um, so for one appointment or the other. And that is exactly what has happened. So nobody should be deluded thinking that it's for altruistic reasons, it's for autocentric reasons, not for altruistic reasons. Um, what are the practices of since from 2023? It's a different thing altogether. When they get into that party, of course, they'll work with the APC to ensure the APC perpetuates itself in office. Those that are going to leave the APC for the PDP will also ensure that the PDP um, out the APC come 2023. And that is it. Whichever wins, well, that's, that, that is depend. Well, I hope it will depend on the matters. I said I hope that is if the elections are not going to be rigged because there are also precursor signs that there are plans for the elections to be rigged, given the opposition that created the uh, transmission of results electronically. Let's even start by, I, I want us to, because, I mean, you worked under a PDP government, so you have some, you know, insight into it. Now, let's look at the leadership. But, but I must say there now that I'm not in APC or PDP. I know that. Um, but but I, I want, let's, let's examine the leadership of Prince Uche Secundus. Now, let's not also forget that the problem that is rocking the PDP, uh, the APC right now, is also bordered on leadership. Um, but, but let's look at the leadership of Prince Uche Secundus and the people that came before him. How well has he fared as a party chairman um, in terms of steering the ship, uh, in terms of, you know, blurring the lines and, um, you know, strengthening the party? How well has he done? Let's take a, a look at, you know, his leadership skills. Well, I, I, I will be pontificating if I give a penetrating talk to Prince Uche Secundus' leadership style. Because um, I'm not a member of the party, that is number one. And um, most of these things are internal, they're intra-party. Not, it's not like a government that is open to uh, public uh, prognosis. This is an intra-party matter. The only issue I have is that PDP has not been a virile opposition. That is given. That one is things irrefragable, nobody can argue that. But to talk of the internal workings of the PDP, I know that there are lots of disgruntled uh, party members, and uh, they, they attribute that to high-handedness, not just uh, from Uche Secundus, but by even some governors. Uh, that, that, and they believe that Secundus is being remotely controlled by certain governors. That is the truth. But I cannot tell you for say, I mean, when I talk about specificity, I cannot say this is the actual problem, but for what these people have said yesterday uh, when they resigned. They talked of uh, financial recklessness and high-handedness. Well, talking of the high-handedness, I can't really say, but they are strong, and even Moazu well alluded to that one, and so many other persons have alluded to that. So that is one fact. But talking of the financial rec recklessness, I'm not privy, I'm not seized of uh, their financial transactions or their financial dealings, so I can't really say. This is, it is incumbent on them to uh, apprise the public of what they mean by financial recklessness. If they have received money, if they have received money, and secondus have been unilaterally spending that money without recourse to due process, probably that is what they mean. There have been cases where, like you said, governors have also been um, seen, you know, being somewhat high-handed in the party, and certain governors seem to be more powerful than other governors. Um, some of the reasons why um, the governor of Cross River State said he left the party for the APC was that he was not allowed to be the leader of the party in his state and that, you know, a certain governor in another state was um, causing trouble within the party in his state. So you see um, the case of high-handedness. Um, and if governors of states are complaining about the fact that they're not allowed to run the structure of the party in their states, uh, um, again, the PDP is supposed to be playing a strong opposition to the APC, as we saw when the PDP was in power, how the APC was able to run them out of government. And we're not even advocating for anything, but we're just saying the, well, in, the duty of the PDP seems to, be have, so seems to have been abdicated one way or the other. Should this also be hipped on the head of the party chairman, or is it a, a blame that should be shared by all and sundry? Well, talking of uh, being, uh, playing an active role in, in the opposition, uh, it all, let us not forget that um, under the Jonathan's administration, Jonathan was quite impervious, was quite 
tolerant. Uh, he tolerated a lot of views, dissenting views, and so on. And he was more, more of a Democrat. But in this particular instance, you find out that um, there are so many attempts, relentless attempts, to muzzle the press and to change the freedom of information and expression. So when you say um, the APC was quite active when it was in opposition, it was, it was consequent upon the leader, the president after that time, who gave room and allowed a lot of things to happen. So you're Not saying that the Buhari, you're, you're, so you're implying that the Buhari administration is stifling the voice of the PDP. Is that what you mean? The fact that you're saying there's no freedom of information. You're saying that the voices of the PDP well, members it, 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 or the voice of the opposition no is being stifled. Is, How? I, I am saying categorically that under this present administration, the rule of law has been case and the administration of justice round is subverted. There are lenders are trying to muzzle the press. They come up with all sorts of laws. We are aware of the Twitter issue. We are aware of the NBC code. We are aware of so many other, a little plethora of them, in order to intimidate the press and suppress opposition. Because they see dangerous enemies in the painter's shadow and decipher sinister plots behind every dissenting word. That is not in doubt. Nobody can dispute that under this administration. But in, under the good law, the other administration was more tolerant than this one. This one is impervious to criticism. Anything you, they came up with in hate speech, whatever, meanwhile, there are laws to address those things, extant laws to address uh, 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 such, such uh, what, they, what they are afraid of. The very thing they are working against was what they weaponized under the general data to remove Jonathan from office. So you cannot compare when it comes to free press. Freedom of the press. You cannot compare the Jonathan's administration with that of the Buhari administration. That I can say can be and I stand to be contradicted anywhere. Hmm. Interested. Let me go to Nzekwe, um, uh, go to Kunzekwe, who's uh, joining us on the phone. Uh, have we lost him? Uh, apologies, we have lost Nzekwe. He probably will come back. But let me come back to you, um, Opunabo. We know, as as at a few hours ago, that Joy Modi of the PDP has recently joined the APC. That's the only name that we can name right now. Uh, and we know who... That's Benway, is it? Benway State, is it? Yes. The senator. Yes. yes. And, Benway, and, Benway. and she was part of the board of trustees uh, of the PDP, but now she has joined the APC. Um, this obviously means that, like you said, there's something within the APC that's attractive and that's why they're joining the APC. We, we haven't heard from the other six members where they're going, but we know that they have resigned. Um, the states that have the PDP seem to be southern states. And there are people who have, the pundits who have said that soon the PDP might just become a regional government. Uh, you know, just like APGA, <laughs> APGA is now a, a, a one state party. So. Do you see this happening sometime soon, um, that the APC might just, one way or the other, compress the PDP into just a few states in the South? Well, uh, without any attempt to foreshadow, uh, because uh, every one minute means a lot in politics. One second. A lot of people, I mentioned yesterday, a lot of people that have defected to the, P the APC today might go back to the PDP if their terms, if their conditions are not met. Because like I told you, they did not defect based on principle. No, it was for their own selfish reason. They, they just felt like those who, who talk of high-handedness, they just felt that uh, their ambitions will not be brought to fruition on, in the PDP. So let us move to the APC. The same thing too, due to the APC members that are defecting to the PDP. So uh, it is too early in the day because most of them might defend back to the A might go back to the PDP, and most might go back to the APC. But if you compare uh, the crisis rocking both parties, I think it's worse off in the APC. It's worse off in the APC. I was really hoping that you'd say that, and then I had a question because, um, as bad as oh, the crisis, I see. <laughs> as, yes, as bad as the crisis in the APC is, we still haven't seen anybody move grounds. And I remember talking to a member of the APC uh, one of those but days. But you just mentioned Joy. You just mentioned Joy who was moving to APDB. No, no, just hold on. And and and, and just, Otom, Otom moved from APC to PDP. Yeah, well, but just Joy, hold on. moving from PDP. Otom moved from APC to PDP. No, no, no. Joy moved from PDP to the APC. APC, what was Otom? 
Well, just hold on. I'm going somewhere. As bad as the crisis in the APC is, you, we've hardly seen anybody decide to move to the PDP. Now, I remember when I was talking to a member, a high-ranking member of the APC, and he asked a simple question to the opposing side, the person who was representing the PDP, that what, would, what does the PDP have to offer? That the APC is the, power, the party in power, and of course, if you join the party in power, there's a lot more to gain from it, other than a, a party that's gradually dying. This was not, this were not my words. So really, if these people were to move to the PDP, what's the guarantee that the PDP has the power to give them what they want? That is the question I'm going to be posing to you again. Uh, but, as but, bad as but, the situation uh, is, people are going to court. They're asking mm -hmm. that Booney uh, be removed as you know the head of the National Working Committee. Uh, all of the problems they're facing, the, the failed congresses and this, you know conversations around if they're going to have the congresses all over again, the people have stayed put. What does that say? about the PDP? Well, like I said, I will really quick that um, it's too early in the day because a lot of people, like in, in less than 24 hours, thousands can descend from one particular from the political party to another. You in keep saying that, but in the past few that. months, we've only then, seen then, a mass movement to the APC. And, and we've seen yeah, the PDP lose yeah, governors. We've seen the I PDP agree. lose senators. Right Don't now, members forget. of the Board of Trustees are Don't being, being lost to the APC. We Mayan, do, we're not seeing the same from Mayan the other side. Don't also forget, don't, Mayan, don't also forget that just 24 hours to the election, a lot of people lost, might also move from one party to the other. That's what I'm telling you. But I, and what I extrapolate from what you said, the other somebody a guest said, is that they are going to bring the accusers to bear. Because the movement of yes, it is going to have effect. But the masses are the ones to decide which party is to win. And that is why we'll call for electronic voting. Now, a lot of them are moving to the APC. Even in the APC, you have to stop and don't. The man who spoke with you, I don't want to mention his name, but I can guess, I can surmise, who spoke with you is not on terms with the leader of the party. And don't forget, it has really nothing to do with numerical strength because you can be in a party and become a fit columnist like what happened in River State in 2019, where those party members were the ones that truncated uh, the, the participation of the APC in River State. So it's not all about that. It has to do with interest. So that's what I'm telling you that right now is actually too early to say which party will win. You might be surprised that even the press party might win. Let's because see. a lot of these APC members might also leave the APC with and defend to another political. That was how the APC was formed. Hmm. They also have the PDP. Before 2015, there was no APC. In 2014, there was no APC. That was how the APC was formed. So certain persons might also decide to come together to strengthen an existing political party for it to emerge victorious come 2023. Hmm. That's the point I'm making. Okay. Because a lot of people that have defected to the APC will not remain in that APC come 2023. I bet you. Not most of them, because the moment the ambitions are not met or guaranteed, they will defect. They are not doing it for, in the interest of the public. It's for selfish reasons. It's for selfish gain. And most of them are money bags. So they can afford to finance or sponsor another political party. Let us use and, uh, Obama's example, who is a senator today. Who is also contested? He left and went and joined the YPP. When well, he realized that his ambition in the PDP will be made and strong, he joined the APC, AP, uh, the YPP. This thing will happen. That's the point I'm trying to make. Let's talk about now that we're talking about other political parties. Uh, the former um, chairman of INEC, um, Professor Tahiru Jega, had a few words for. Nigerians, and he did speak about the fact that um, Nigerians should, you know, dump the APC and the PDP um, because they have not served us, you know, since we decided to go down this road of democracy. And he also sl slid in uh, the fact that he was also um, becoming a member of a certain political party that might not have been as big as the PDP and the APC. So my question now is, with all of the infighting and the big parties, do we see smaller parties emerging, or like you said, maybe be forming another front like the, you know, the, the, the APC did? Um, do we see most of these politicians also moving to those smaller parties and trying to see if they can run? Uh, because I asked a question yesterday, 
all of these parties, whether big or small, do they have um, ideologies? What are those ideologies? What do they stand for? And as you have said, since the politicians do not have ideologies, we keep crisscrossing. And where does that leave us as voters? The, we, the electorates, who have to choose between the devil and the deep blue sea. Do people really vote for political parties? That's where I call the Supreme Court judgment. But that's what we see. That's, that, that's what we see on the ballot that, paper. No, that, we don't see the names that, of politicians. That's what I'm we saying. see politicians. No, that's what I'm saying. That's why I fault the Supreme Court judgment that said you vote for political parties and not for individual. Uh, Marianne, we are we are, we are not also deceive ourselves. We all know that membership of a party is not planned on the ideology or constitution of that party. It is planned on your loyalty to a particular individual and not the party. How do you mean? That's the truth about it. If I have a follower, and today I'm a member, hypothetically, a member of WWW, name of a political party, and I'm defecting to YYY, all my loyalists will follow me to YYY. They will not remain in WWW. That's the politics we play in Nigeria. So that's what I'm saying. Most of the, all the political people are devoid of ideology. They could come up with... They, they, Richard David the Bumi, the problem, part of the problem in APC is because they have a caretaker committee chairman who is in, which is in breach of their constitution. So nobody really will, will base constitution or nobody is fidel to, to ideology. Nobody. It is all about the individual and personal interest. That's the point I am making. So if today they move, this money bars, move from party A to party B, their loyalists will move with them. And most of them can reach accommodation to say, okay, let us all support a particular prime candidate or particular candidate in some parties with our money and with our influence and with our clout. That is what will play out come 2023. So the victory of a party depends on, on the individual, not necessarily the party's constitution, not necessarily the party's uh, antecedents, not necessarily what the party can offer. Because uh, if you talk of party, what does the APC offer? Nothing completely. What we have is cataclysmic leadership. Okay. Complete failure, dismal performance. So how if you if you based on rating, on performance, what do the APC how can the APC return to office in twenty twenty three? It's not so, possible. So That's not possible. Um, one That's last true. question before we wrap it up because we're out of time. Um we keep talking about the fact that these political parties have no ideologies and they have nothing to offer. But then we're asking Nigerians to become parts of this political party so that they, their voices can also be heard and they can feel more represented uh, other than wait till the party you know, presents a candidate. So shouldn't we, as Nigerians who want to join political parties, or should political, political parties in Nigeria start having the conversation about what their ideologies, their clerical ideologies are, as opposed to just moving from party A to B in order to strengthen the core of those parties instead of seeing these mass movements when it's close to election season? No. Um, um, membership of a political party does not really uh, ensure change in that political party because you already have people with mindsets. You know, I mean, parties are ruled by lease laws. Those I call lease laws. You have the lease laws and you have the lease servants. So you already have those that are in charge of that political party. And it is what they say that will be done, that will be carried out. So the only weapon the masses will have, the voters will have, is their voter's card. And that is why we talk of electronic voting, because you, at that point, is that, is that, really, is that, that, is that point, really a tool that they have? Because really, these parties have already decided whoever they want. They throw up whoever they want. Saying, that's what I'm saying. So now who may not necessarily be that, who we want. So really, do they have a that's choice? That's what I'm saying. That's the point I mean. The, so that's the card. So that when you say, Mr. A, come on, my followers, go and vote for Mr. A. We will all go there and vote for Mr. B. And once Mr. B, Mr. A is out of office, there is really nothing they can do. Most of these governors come to by next year, mid next year to end of next year. You see a lot of people resigning from their cabinet, from the offices. I am telling you, because they are just there, not because they are happy with the system, but for stomach infrastructure. They have to survive. Mm -hmm. That's why most of them are still there. And most of these governors are aware. So all we need is our voters' card. That is the weapon we have. So that we say, okay, fine, collect this money from this man. We are going to vote for Mr. A, sir. But as we step up, we vote for Mr. B. 
That's the only way we can affect the change. But if you think that just being a member of a party, what are you going to do? You're just there to carry out orders. They go in, into a closed door meeting, come out and tell you, okay. this is what we want you to do. Go ahead and carry out this order. It's as simple as that. There is really nothing you can do. All right. Well, and if you saw, they say, if you are that brilliant and you are that politically sagacious, why are, you, why are you not a government? Why are you not a minister? Why are you not a president? These are the questions they ask you. Hmm. So for the matter that they did what they did and it took them to where they are today, they believe they are sagacious and it is the best thing to do. Opunabo Kotara is a former special advisor to the governor of River State. Thank you very much for speaking with us. We really appreciate it. It's my pleasure, Marianne. All Thank right. You. We'll take a short break. And when we come back, of course, we will talk about the APC member asking the court to annul the congresses that happened over last weekend and sack the Buni-led committee. Stay with us. We'll be right back.